Hi, everyone. Welcome to week 22. We're doing all right. Well, I'm down a total of 33.2 pounds, and that's great. I mean, this has just been such a great thing, and I'm going to break fairly soon what they call Wonderland. That's when you get into the 100s. I have been overweight, like I said, my whole life, and the last time I remember being not overweight was maybe when I was like eight. And so this is really a miracle for me. And again, dropping my calories by about 100 of what I used to eat. I used to eat around 1,500 calories. Now I'm eating 1,400 calories. I'm getting more fiber and more protein, but still, I stuck around 1,500 calories. And the weight is coming off. I did increase the dose, and that has been really good for me. You know, that has started working. Today I took the shot for the upcoming week 22. And boy, the side of the side effects, which are the only ones I have, are nauseous. I just sit there for about two hours feeling nauseous and then it goes away. So that's good that nothing is new. It was a pretty strong nausea, but it went away after two hours. So good Um, for that. And it's funny because tomorrow is Thanksgiving and everyone's like, well, what are you going to do for Thanksgiving? What are you going to eat? And I said, the funny thing of it is, is now everything is about being with people I love. It's not about what I'm going to eat. And that makes a lot of people sad. But this drug also somehow mentally fixes all the sad too. The good news is that I went into my doctor's office, my labs, to get the 90 day or the, it's actually 120 days, but there's a reason for that. But anyway, to get my new labs and the new labs came back great. My blood glucose was in the sevens. Now it's 5.5, which is under diabetes level. My cholesterol, which I'm also taking a cholesterol medicine because it went up too high as well, perfectly normal. So between losing weight and the cholesterol medicine, that is perfectly fine too. My hope, I mean, the whole reason I want to do all of this is to get healthy so that someday when I land, I won't have to take a cholesterol medicine. I won't have to hopefully take Mongero, maybe... I have to because my metabolism is clearly messed up. When you eat this diet and it takes you 50 weeks to lose six pounds and then you go on Manjaro and it takes you two weeks, my metabolism is clearly messed up. When people talk about low testosterone or low hormone levels in people, it feels like this is that kind of thing where you just are low in something that your body is either not producing or somehow burned out of you because you probably screwed a number of things up gaining weight. I'm a big fan of people trying to figure out how can we get kids not to be in this position? Can we find ways of getting kids to never gain weight? Even if you gain weight, you still have what they call fat cells. And the fat cells, I was just reading a study last week, remember you being overweight. You gain more fat cells. And so the fat cells are sitting there going, how do I fill up? How do I fill up with that? I feel awfully deflated. When you have more fat cells, it's always going to remember you're overweight. And it is always going to try to go back up to that set point again, that's that stasis again. So I know that this will be a struggle. And we'll talk in the future about off ramps and what it looks like right now. But for now, everything is working as expected. Diabetes, gone. Cholesterol, gone. Weight, Coming down 33, like I said, by next March when I go hiking again, I hope it to be down another, you know, 30-something. Then I'll be in really good shape. And it's really touching to me how amazing this drug is. I never got emotional about a drug before, but I am <laughs> I'm not a very emotional person, as you can tell. But for me, boy, this really just gets me right here in the in the feels because how would I go anywhere if I didn't have something like this to help me get to this place where for the first time since I was probably eight years old, I see hope for myself of getting down to a normal weight. Lucky for me, my side effects haven't been bad. I know some people have very dire side effects. I even saw an article last week that says, well, 20% of people don't lose weight. Although the article said that part of the 20% of people who don't lose weight, that woman still lost 13 pounds, which I know that's an expensive 13 pounds. But I wish I knew more. What is she eating? Is she exercising? Is she doing anything? Again, this drug is great, but it's not autopilot. For some people it is. And I think it 
it has to do with how much weight you have now and how much level of activity you have now. But boy, you have a drug that works for 80% of people. I don't know of any drug. I work in the clinical research world, and I don't know of any drug that is 80% effective like that. That's pretty stunning, to be honest with you. So I feel really good about this, and I am in the last size of shirts. So I went from, well, let's just say it, 4X shirts. These are 2X shirts. I fit now in my 1X shirts, and I lost enough inches. Even when I wasn't losing weight, strangely enough, I'm still continuing to put muscle on. I'm still continuing to keep my bone mass, which is great, and losing fat, viscous subcutaneous. So it's the plan is working. And my doctor even, because like I said, he's a professor, he called it clinically significant. Yep, it's, it's personally significant too. So I feel really great about this. And you know, here's to that. So, you know, talk to your doctor about Manjaro or what you could go on that could potentially help you. I think it is for someone who has a broken metabolism, just undescribable. I mean, it really is. But, you know, like I said, with everything, there's always going to be some downsides. My hair is crazy. I don't know what's going on with my hair, but it ended up... Um, getting a little bit thinner. I noticed that as well. But it's always, I always had a lot of hair, but it was always kind of curly and soft. And it, it's better than it was, but for a while it got kind of uh, straw-like and it wouldn't do anything. And normally I don't have to curl my hair or anything. It's sort of naturally curly. But since being on this drug, my hair has been weird. It's been very flat and I have to curl it in order to d get it to do anything. And like I said, it's getting a little bit thinner. So what I did is I started troubleshooting it. What could I do in order to improve it? Obviously, I want to continue to lose weight. And if some hair or the quality of my hair is the price I pay for that, that is nothing. You know, my health and getting to a place where I can be healthy is everything. So what could I do? So people suggested taking biotin, making sure that you're getting enough protein. So I upped my protein a little bit. And then collagen. I don't know if that's true or not. But collagen is also good so that your skin stays springy. So as you're losing weight, it shrinks up with you. And so you don't hopefully get a lot of excessive skin, although I think anytime you're going to lose this much weight, you're going to get excessive skin. So th the point of all of this is that whenever you have these kinds of issues, whether you're working with one of these drugs or it's just life in general, is to start tackling things, start going after things. You know, if you're having a hair problem, figure it out. If you're having a skin problem, figure it out. But if same thing with the, the weight loss. When my weight was stalling and I wasn't losing very much weight, I stepped up my exercise. I started looking again at how much protein, see if I could up the protein and drop other things out. And I still have room to go on the exercise. I started thinking about it yesterday that, you know, you're down. 33 pounds. I walk around at my gym trainer uh, with a 35 pound kettlebell and we do kettlebell swings with that. It is heavy. It is really heavy. And the funny thing of it is that's how much weight I lost. And so it made me think when I was at the gym today, that's what you were walking around with. That was what was on top of your knees. That was what was on top of your joints. But the funny thing is, is with losing weight, I've lost a step a little bit in some of my weight-bearing exercises, like bench presses and those kinds of exercises, but I've gained in aerobic exercise. I am much easier on the breathing. I've had uh, pretty severe asthma when it gets triggered, and that has been better. In fact, I have one of those withing bed monitor things because I was breathing so poorly at night. I was getting a little worried could this get worse? And at one point, I had two cats. Uh, the cats uh, were brothers, and so they were both 17 years old. And when they died, my sadly, my breathing got better. So there must have been some allergy in there that was still affecting me. And now, when I look at my breathing monitoring, because it basically lays under your mattress, and it detects your heart rate, it detects your breathing, it tries to detect how well you're sleeping. If you're moving around, then that means you're not in REM state because when you're in REM state, you have muscle lock. And so it tries to analyze how good you're sleeping. 
And the interesting thing is, is that as I started losing weight, my breathing got better at night. So it gives you this measurement of how much of the night you had disturbed breathing and how much of the night were you snoring, probably related. And even on that measure, both of those things are much improved. In fact, I used to be in red, mostly yellow with a little tinge of red. And now I am solidly in green, not even coming anywhere to near the yellow line. So my breathing has improved. I mean, every stat I can look at is improved. This is healthy. And this is something that is just going to get better. And I'm excited about that. But troubleshooting. I work in software. I work IT for a hospital. And that's the the nature of troubleshooting. Well, when did you see this error? What happened that caused the error? Were you doing anything at that moment? You're asking good questions. And you can take that same troubleshooting skill set and bring it into your life. If you're feeling sick to your stomach or you're nauseous, is there something that you ate that possibly caused it? Is there something that you can take that could possibly solve it? Is there something that you could be doing a little bit differently? Now, one of the troubleshooting steps that I took early on when taking this drug is I spent a good deal of time trying to think about what day of the week was I going to take this drug because it comes on strong. I took it today. Like I said, I felt a little sick for a while. I found out in camping I feel a little weak for a couple of hours too. I don't have the stamina that I normally do. That goes away. I don't see people between Wednesday after I go to my gym until Friday morning when I go back to my gym. So Wednesday through Friday is a really good time for me to take the drug because even if I felt terrible, I have a good solid two days to to feel better. So I picked Wednesday at 2 o'clock. That way I have time to eat get most of my calories in because after I take this drug, I don't feel like eating anything. So I get about 90% of Wednesday's calories in before two o'clock. And then I give myself a little, little something. Tonight I had a spring roll and my water, just a little something because I found that eating something settles my stomach as well, but not too much. So that's a perfect time. Then if for whatever reason I didn't know when I was first taking the drug, would I be sick longer? I still have Thursday to get better about it. But the other part of it is too, is the drug hangs in there stronger after you take it. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, strong. Saturday and Sunday eases up a little bit. Monday eases up a little bit more. And by Tuesday, I'm almost darn near normal. I mean, as in like what I felt like before. And I joke, that's when I ate fish when I went camping because I thought if it's going to make me feel sick to my stomach, Tuesday's the best day to eat Something I'm not entirely sure about because, again, I don't like fish. But I patterned this week so that I'd be strongest with the drug on weekends when the temptation was the highest. Going out with friends. We still like going out to eat at restaurants, but I don't want to have a big meal. I don't want to go and eat things I'm not supposed to eat. So if I can have this drug in strong effects going into the weekend when I face the most temptation, then, I mean, what happens on Monday and Tuesday? Not really much of anything. So it's pretty good, except that one time I spoke at that college, I was in a gigantic cafeteria full of pie on a Tuesday. And well, yeah, but you see how it is. So we're being proactive. And so if you can take troubleshooting and even doing a bit of uh, planning ahead of time, I guess is the way to say it. I knew Wednesday would be the best day for me for all the reasons I just gave. Can you plan a little bit ahead of time to avoid problems, to spare yourself problems so that you know what's going to happen next? That's really what I spend a lot of time doing. Like I said, I am a professional troubleshooter, and so I spend time on one side trying to troubleshoot anything that goes wrong. When I had some stomach woes, I troubleshot. I looked in how I could fix this, and I fixed it. In the end, it took me just getting a little bit more fiber. Like I said, my apple and my pear every day did the job. When I've had other problems in my life, troubleshooting. What can I do to either solve this problem or prevent it from happening again? Or is there a way I can even look into next week and see what problems I could avoid by doing something? For example, I went, got gas. I got my Monjero dose a week early holidays. I started looking ahead because I knew 
that next week Jill would thank me for thinking ahead and trying to figure out what problems I would face earlier. So keep that in mind. You know, you can tackle your problems, troubleshooting, which is reactive, or being proactive and trying to solve the problems before they even happen. I'll give you another example. It's winter now. It, it, we are having a pretty decent cold snap. I have a car in the garage, but my old car is sitting in the driveway. Now, what happens when it gets too cold and that old car won't start? I won't be able to get the newer car out of the garage because the old car that is frozen is stuck in front of it. So I decided to be proactive and got a big long extension cable and got my trickle charger, which is what we do in the North Woods for making sure our cars start in winter, and set it all right by the door. So when it gets super cold on Friday, I can go and trickle charge the battery on my car and ensure that I can always start it so that I can get that car out of the driveway so I can take my other car that's in the driveway and get it out too. A little bit of proactive steps will save you headaches on the I have four podcasts. What I'm trying to do with Start With Small Steps is to record that podcast at the same time I'm doing video with that podcast and putting them in video locations as well as podcast locations at the same time so that I'm doing no more work because having four podcasts is a lot of work, but getting multiple benefits out of it. So please remember to subscribe. Start With Small Steps. That's the first channel that's going up. And you're welcome to email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. I'd love to hear from you. Or if this is a video channel, please leave your message, subscribe, tell a friend about this, and let me know how your journey with whatever it is you're trying to face is going. And I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving too. Thanks so much.